Rule 36. Real wealth comes from deals, not fees. I'm not saying that it's impossible to become wealthy working for someone else, because it can happen. See the next rule. And of course you have to define wealth, as we saw in Rule 2. It may be that you have no ambition to rival Bill Gates in the wealth stakes, but would be happy with a mortgage-free house, a couple of luxury holidays a year, and a good lump sum set aside for emergencies, or to pass on to the kids. In that case selling your time, which is what you're effectively doing as an employee or a freelancer, may make you wealthy if you're sought after enough. Look at the professional classes. They're a good example of what I mean. Lawyers and top doctors and successful financial advisors and so on. They all have extremely comfortable lives that many of us would aspire to. But they're none of them in the super-rich league. Not unless they've either inherited their money or they're doing something else on the side. To make real big serious money, you have to do deals. Buy and sell. I wasn't kidding when I told you in Rule 33 to learn the art of deal-making. Because that's the only way to make millions. Look at the wealthiest people in the world. They're none of them employees, or even freelancers. They're all selling stuff. Computers, aeroplane seats, banking services, cars, newspapers. Now hang on, don't give up your day job just yet. I'm not saying you can't work for someone else, at least for now. But recognise that if your ambition is to make a fortune, you're going to have to leave the job eventually and strike out. Maybe you can wheel and deal on the side and leave the job when you no longer need it. Or maybe you need a plan for setting up on your own. However you choose to play it, sooner or later you'll have to start buying and selling if you're going to become a millionaire. You'll have to start buying and selling if you're going to become a millionaire. Rule 37. Understand that working for others won't necessarily make you rich. But it might. Most of us assume that we'll never make it to greater prosperity while we are working for someone else. That only by being entrepreneurial will we become wealthy. And for a lot of us, this may well be true. There is a limit as to how much you can earn per hour in return for your labour. However, there are some who do make it good this way. We shouldn't overlook the fact that being employed may be the best route for us, and that we don't have to run our own boosiness. There are whole categories of employees that are doing quite nicely, thank you. For example, a friend of mine works in corporate insurance, and he's extremely wealthy thanks to large commission payments. He says he wouldn't be any better off working for himself. Many people working in the computer business opted to become contractors because they assumed they would earn a lot more. Some did, but at the cost of stability. When the contracts dried up, some were worse off than when employed. But for some this was indeed the best way to go, and they have made handsome sums by becoming self-employed. I guess you have to keep an open mind about this one and not be driven by assumptions. You can make yourself pretty unhappy by forcing yourself into self-employment if this isn't the right way for you. Perhaps the stability of employment is a greater priority and you should stick with it and not feel compelled to start your own business. The converse is true as well. Understand that working for yourself might make you rich, but it might not. Nearly two-thirds of business startups end in failure within three years. Look around you and you will see many examples of the small business owner struggling desperately. There's no certainty there. Working for yourself generally has higher earning potential, but not in every case. You have to look into it very closely. Right business, right demand for your services, right time, enough effort, and so on. There isn't the space or time here to go into all the pros and cons of working for yourself. Except to say it's one hell of a lot easier and much more fun working hard for yourself than for someone else. But what we are aiming for isn't freedom from employment, but prosperity. Hence we have to be open to whichever means will hasten our achievement of that goal. Employment, or going it alone. It entirely depends on which one will get us rich easiest, fastest, slickest. And your day job doesn't have to be your route to wealth at all. The secret is not to close your mind to any opportunity to get rich. And staying employed doesn't mean not having a little eBay business on the side or a buy-to-lease property to create a new income stream. Perhaps the stability of employment is a greater priority and you should stick with it. Rule 38. Don't waste time procrastinating. Make money decisions quickly. If you are out at sea and it cuts up rough, you make for a safe harbour. Any port in a storm. You don't spend time procrastinating over whether the harbour has shower facilities or your favourite restaurant chain 
or cheaper moorings. No, you just get the hell out of the storm, while there's still space in the harbour, and be grateful it provides the one thing you really need. Safety. Making money is a bit like that. Sometimes you just need to act. As long as you get some return on your action, it's better than doing nothing. This isn't complicated, but you'd be amazed how many people overlook this and think, I'll decide how to invest that little lump sum I've saved up later. I can't decide whether to buy shares or put it in a savings account. So they do nothing, and the money sits in a current account earning no interest, or worse still, gets frittered away by default and inflation. You don't have to think too deeply about this stuff. You don't have to think too hard. You don't even have to really think at all. The samurai lived by a simple creed. No hesitation, no doubt, no surprise, no fear. It is simply the most brilliant strategy for doing anything. It basically says that once you have decided on a course of action, or battle or combat, then be committed. Know everything you need to know about it, don't be afraid, and get on with it as quickly as possible. If you've ever seen a samurai sword fight, you'll notice they circle each other, and then there is a dramatic burst of activity, a flurry of intense violence, and it's all over. One or other, or frequently, both opponents are dead. The circling is not preparation. That was done over years and years of training. The circling is checking out your opponent, taking their mind. When they go into attack, it is a direct, swift, no hesitation attack and your financial plans must have the same razor-sharp incisiveness about them. Doing something is invariably better than doing nothing, even if it's a firm decision to stay put, and sometimes acting fast can be a lot better than holding out on a possible IT. Suppose you buy and sell antiques and collectibles as a money-spinning hobby. If you buy a plate for $10 and think you can sell it for $30 but somebody offers you $20 within an hour, then you take the $20 and go and buy two more plates at $10 to sell on in the same way. I'm not saying you should act blindly. Far from it. Like the samurai, we're talking about stuff you already know. Now you have to act on it. Make your decision wise and sensible and considered and thoughtful. But make it now. Quickly weigh up the odds, consider the pros and cons, and then get on with it. The samurai lived by a simple creed. No hesitation. No doubt. No surprise. No fear. Rule 39. Work as if you didn't need the money. Most of us work because we do need the money. But some of us let it show, and some of us don't. If somebody looks as though they don't need the money, it's for one of two reasons. Either A they put on a good act, or B they genuinely enjoy their work, and do it because they love it. They would do it, even if they didn't need the money. Clearly B is a fantastic place to be, and one we should all strive to get to. But even if that's not the case for you yet, there's a very good reason to act as if you would work irrespective of the financial return. If people think or indeed know that you need the money, it gives them power over you, and that puts you in a vulnerable position. It makes you insecure. If you work as if you don't need the money, they have no power, and you have it instead. Many years ago I worked in a job I hated, and I was unhappy. Later on I started a business that my heart wasn't really in, and it failed. But I have always written. Am I a writer? Not really. I don't write highbrow fiction. I wish I could, but I know my limitations and stick to writing about what I see other people doing. But writing is something I have always done, whether I get paid for it or not, whether it gets published or not. And that's my secret. I do it because I passionately care about it. It is my heart and soul and belief and drive and ambition. It is so much a part of me that no one can touch it or have power over it or take it away. Do you know how happy that makes me? Do you know how rich that is making me? Do you know how much power that gives me? And for once I don't mean financially happy, although that too is part of it in a big way. So what's your secret? What makes your heart turn cartwheels? Where does your dream lie? You've got to be driven. Being prosperous has no room for I don't know, or I'm not sure. You've got to know, you've got to be sure. Why? Because that is what wealthy people do. They know where they are going, and what they are going to do when they get there. They have passion and drive, and ambition and determination. They work because they want to. Ah, but I hear you say, the passion and determination is something they are born with. It's in their personality. Perhaps it is. But it's also something you can emulate, copy, 
mirror. Do like them to become like them. Work as if you didn't need the money. Aim for the point where you don't do anything unless your heart is in it. If people think that you need the money, it gives them power over you, and that makes you insecure. Obviously, even if you are following your dream, there will be moments, days, when you've had enough, and you're sick of everything. We're talking about what you overall enjoy, on the whole find pleasurable, mostly glory in. Rule 40. Spend less than you earn. I'm amazed how many people flout this simple, but most golden of all golden rules. You have to live within your means. Control your spending. Allow yourself to create a little bit of savings, with which to generate more income. Remember the rabbit farm. You can't breed more rabbits if you sell them all. This rule doesn't contradict Rule 35 about small economies not making you rich, by the way. You should live within your means, but live well enough to be happy. If you don't earn enough to have champagne every week, then have it only once a month. But do have it if it makes you happy. This is about being informed and in control. You need to know what your income is and what your expenses are. We'll talk later about how to curb spending and save and how to cut up your credit cards if they've let you down. They do that sometimes, evil little things. You also need to know any expenditure that is likely to come up. Any provision you've made for contingency plans. Any future income you may be entitled to in the way of interest or investments coming to fruition. And that really is about it. Where people go wrong is not whether they earn enough or spend too much. Both of those are fairly easy to overcome. No, the biggest mistake is not knowing what you are doing, where you are financially, and what is up ahead. I know it can be tough to live within your means, but if you are constantly in debt, all the prosperity that is rightfully yours is going to some faceless bank. I bet they're enjoying spending it. I bet they're having champagne more than once a week. Why encourage them? I want you to know to the very week, the very hour, what you earn. And I want you to monitor what you spend, what it costs you to live, where you waste money, where you save money, and where you spend money wisely. As long as more is coming in than is going out, you're getting the basics right. If more is going out than coming in, you need to take swift and effective action to redress the situation. The biggest mistake is not knowing what you are doing, where you are financially, and what is up ahead. Thanks for following this broadcast to this point. Just a reminder that this broadcast is brought to you daily by Jacita Media Broadcast. Jacita Media Broadcast is a subsidiary of Jacita Constructions Limited, a trusted family wholly owned construction firm in Ghana. JCL offer services such as land sales, manufacture and sales of all types of building blocks, general construction and building projects, maintenance and management of rental properties. JCL can be contacted in Ghana on 059 704 2541. Thanks.